a fucking thing, you guys. I've been meaning to have a conversation about one Brett Okamoto. Now, Brett Okamoto, he does some good stuff. You know, he, he does some fight announcements sometimes, but he hasn't done one for ages. He's just, nowadays, he just copies off people who have already announced fights and then acts, acts like he knew about it first. But Brett, Brett Okamoto did something today that uh, really, really annoyed me and something that just logically doesn't make any sense at all. So Brett Okamoto obviously is an ESPN, works for ESPN and he does uh, the list, you know, he does them like pound for pound list things uh, and he'll rank fighters, you know, in a top 10 sort of thing and define who's the best. And I didn't see this. This was two days ago, I believe. He literally, in a in an article, he said, Israel Adesanya did not look like the better fighter when he was inside the octagon with Sean Strickland at UFC 293. But that was just one night. Over the long haul, one bad performance just do, does not define a fighter any more than one good performance does. He has Sean Strickland at number five on his middleweight top 10 list. He's the UFC champion and he just 49-46 Adesanya. How the fuck does that make any logical sense that Sean Strickland is number five? Number four is Jared Cannonier, who went to a close split decision with Sean Strickland. So he's higher than the UFC champion. Robert Whittaker, who coming off a loss to Drickus Duplessis, is higher than... Sean Strickland, who is the UFC middleweight champion of the world, who beat Adesanya, who beat Whitaker, even though, you know, the second fight was close. I'm not denying that. Then, Trickus Duplessis is second, which, you know, I, I, I believe he is the second. But number one is Israel Adesanya. How does that make any sense? Brett Okamoto is such a corporate shill for the UFC. He's doing anything to save face for Israel Adesanya. He says, you know, one bad performance does not define a fighter any more a fighter any more than one good performance does. He's one and two in his last three, you corporate cockhead. It doesn't make any sense for Israel Adesanya to be number one. Number one, in my opinion, is Sean Strickland, the UFC middleweight champion, who 49-46 Israel Adesanya, arguably 50-45'd him, possibly 10-8'd him in the first round, but I don't think it was a 10-8. And then number two is Drickus Duplessis, who beat Robert Whittaker better than anybody ever has. And then number three is probably Israel Adesanya for now, but I would argue Hamza Chimaev is probably number three, seeing how he does against Paulo Costa. But Brett Okamoto isn't even hiding his bias anymore. There is no logical way you can have Israel Adesanya as number one middleweight in the world. He got 49-46, you dummy. You can't just say a bad performance doesn't define a fighter any more than a good performance. How does a good performance not define Sean Strickland as number one? How? How? It, it doesn't make any sense. It's actually a joke. It's generally a fucking joke. Brett Okamoto, you cannot be taken seriously as a journalist anymore because it just, it, logically, you can't, you can't, you can do all the mental gymnastics you want, but you cannot have Israel Adesanya as the number one middleweight, middleweight in the world when Sean Strickland is masterclassing him for five rounds. Like, and to have Sean Strickland as the fifth best middleweight is honestly ridiculous. He's the best middleweight in the world. He beat the man who, he beat the man. That, that's it. He beat the man. He needs to be number one. Abbasander is the third best middleweight in my opinion. But the fact that you, you could argue second because, you know, he hasn't fought Drickus. We haven't seen how him versus Drickus Duplessis would go. But Brett Okamoto, man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like, I don't know how he can even try and justify this at this point. It's actually ridiculous. It's It actually makes me really mad. Like, 
we all knew he was a corporate shill for Dana. Like, we all knew that he was... I don't know. We A lot of us have probably had the uh, theory that Brett, Otom Brett Okamoto was like a reptilian or an android or something. Like, he, he has... He has them eyes where you don't really know if this guy is a, a sentient being or not, or if he's like some sort of fucking humanoid uh, or a fucking android or something. Like, we've all had that thought, let's be honest. A lot of us have had the, uh, a, we've all had that thought, like, is, is, you know, is, is he from the same, like, android company that developed Mark Zuckerberg? Like, we've had, we've had these thoughts, like, come on, we've all thought that Mark, we've all thought that Brett, Brett Okamoto was some, like, sort of, Android for the UFC or something, or some clone, or at least I have. I've, I've, I've had thoughts that maybe Brett Okamoto was like made in a laboratory or a factory or something for the UFC to like shield them. But this, this is like a joke. Like, this is actually ridiculous to have Sean Strickland number five. Uh, like, I, I, it honestly, it's gobsmacked me. It, it, it's, it's gobsmacked me. Abasanya is one and two in his last three. When, when does he fucking go down the ladder? If he fucking beats Strickland, let's say that they do rematch. I don't think they are going to rematch, but if he does go on to beat uh, Sean Strickland in a rematch, and then he goes into and goes on to lose to Drickus Duplessis, are you going to say, well, one bad performance doesn't define a fighter any more than a good performance does, and then maybe he beats Drickus Duplessis in a rematch, and then he loses his belt again, and then he fights Hamza Chimaev. Are you still going to have him at number one? Like, when does when do you draw the line, Brett, Brett Okamoto, you fucking corporate shill? Like, I, I, it's honestly, it's actually frustrating. Like, can you at least put him number two? Like, sure. You can't have, you logically can't have Strickland at number five, though. He masterclassed your number one. He Like, he can't have his Adesanya number one. Maybe you think that Drickus is number one or something like that, but you can't have Israel Adesanya number one if he got masterclassed by your number five. Like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, man. Like, it's it's honestly, it's fucking ridiculous. I, I, I'm actually, I, I've, I can't believe how bad Brett Okamoto's gotten. Brett, you know, I, I, I don't think Ariel's a fucking good journalist either. I think he's a snake, but at least he will not shill this badly for the fucking UFC. At least he'll have his own opinions, but Brett is doing whatever Dana White tells him to do. Like, obviously, you know, Dana White came up with all these excuses for Israel, saying he looked slow, he looked, uh, he looked real off that fight. Well, he didn't. He fucking didn't. He looked off because Sean Strickland's style made him look off. You know why Sean Strickland's style made him look off? Because he is the number one middleweight in the world. I, 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 can't, I can't believe these pe these are the people getting paid to cover this sport. Brett Okamoto is getting paid to cover this sport and doesn't even have... He has the middleweight champion who 49-46 is alleged number one guy. This guy is getting paid to cover the sport. Don't, you know, if someone tells you you can't achieve your dreams or something like that, just half ass it, half ass it, and you will get, you'll get everywhere in life, apparently. You don't need to try, you don't have to go and try your hardest or anything. Just half ass your way through life, like Brett Okamoto. Don't even try, just suck up to all the corporate overlords and just do whatever the main company wants you to do, and your bank account will be great again. That's all you got to do is, all you got to do, suck up to Dana White, suck up to the UFC. Don't have opinions of your own. Be some mindless fucking android like Brett Okamoto, and you'll get everything in life. You'll be perfect. You'll be, so, you know, your life will be amazing. You'll have all the money in the world. All you got to do is sell your soul to this corporation, and not have any opinions of your own. You might come off like an idiot, which Brett Brett Okamoto is. He's coming off like an idiot with this take. It's honestly a ridiculous take. But hey, who knows? Somebody needs to go and check his. Uh, bank account and see if he's got any money sent in his account. If you see like a 50k bonus, you know, you know the kid's a good journalist. Give him 50k. You know th that's fucking illegal. You know he's he's bribing him or something. Like no way, Brett Okamoto. Like he seems like an intelligent guy, so I can't imagine he truly believes that Israel Adesanya is the number one middleweight in the world at this point. You know he he's one and two. He's Four and three in his last seven fights. Like, 
I know I get one of them was at light heavyweight, but still, he's, you can't argue this guy's number one anymore. It's just, when do we draw the fucking line? Like, honestly, when do we draw the line? When? How many losses does Israel Adesanya have to take before you realize he's not the number one guy? I feel like Israel Adesanya could probably be on a Sam Alvey type losing streak and Brett, Brett Okamoto will be there like, hey, you know, not a, you know, 10 bad performances don't define one good performance, you know? He's, he's still the top guy. It's like... I'm sure Israel Asanya could be fucking unranked and you'd still get Brett Okamoto trying to justify this. You'd still have Sean Strickland at fucking four or something and it's still Israel Asanya would be above him. Okay. Now maybe I ranted a little bit there. Maybe I went a little bit overboard, but I don't give a fuck. It's actually the most stupid thing I've seen in the sport and Brett Okamoto getting paid to cover this sport should give everybody in hope that you can just half-ass your way through life. Don't even try. Don't even try. Just breeze through everything. Don't don't research anything. Just listen to your corporate overlords and do what they say, and you'll achieve everything in life. Because you don't need to have opinions of your own. You don't need to critically think. You don't need to be a free thinker. You just have to listen to what the corporate overlords want you to say. And, you know, fair play to... Brett Hakamoto, he's probably making a bag, but I'm going to call him out for this shit because it's stupid. It's honestly a, one of the worst takes I've ever seen in this sport, and he's a credentialed MMA journalist. Like, he is one of the top MMA journalists. He's coming out with ridiculous takes like this. It's it's actually mind-boggling, but I guess this is the sport we watch. The sport doesn't make sense, and neither do the MMA journalists that we have in this sport. There's only a few good MMA journalists, in my opinion. One of them is Alex Buhin. I hope I pronounced that probably. He's one of the, one of the, he's probably the best MMA journalist. And then me, I'm a good MMA journalist too. If you follow my Twitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I break a lot of fights and I don't, I'm not under, you know, some company and I don't, I don't listen to anything. I'm my own independent MMA journalist. I don't, have any corporate overlords whispering in my ear and telling me what to say like Brett, Brett Okamoto does. My takes are my takes. I believe everything I say and that's all you're going to get from me is my honest takes. You're not going to get what Dana White wants me to say. You're not going to get what ESPN wants me to say. You're going to get the truth. You're going to get the best takes in MMA from me because I'm not under any, sh I'm not shilling for anybody. I'm just spreading my own opinions, my own facts. And that's all you're going to get from me is you're going to get the facts. And yeah, just expect that from me because I'll never sell out. I'll never sell my soul to any corporations like this. I won't sell my soul to ESPN, to Disney, to the UFC, to Bellator, to Viacom. None of them. Nobody will own my soul. And that's that's all I'm going to be. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to have my own opinions. And I'm not going to, I'll never say anything stupid. If Sean Strickland was to lose, I wouldn't be trying to justify him being number one because he may have, you know, bad performance doesn't define a good performance, you know? Like, he had a great performance against Israel Adesanya, so he's still the number one guy in the world. I'm like, no, I wouldn't do that because I'd be stupid. But he is currently the number one man in the world, number one middleweight in the world. You know why? Because he's 46. 49 46 Israel Adesanya in one of the best performances, one of the best title winning performances in a huge underdog win. Just because he was an underdog, Brett Okamoto, doesn't mean he isn't good. It doesn't mean that Israel Adesanya was off. It just means that Sean Strickland was better than you thought he was, better than we all thought we did. Not many of us picked him. I didn't pick him. I picked Israel Adesanya. I thought Israel Adesanya was going to run through him. But you know what? I'm not here trying to lie and justify the my pick of Israel Adesanya by saying he looked off or he didn't look like himself. He looked exactly like he always does. But Sean Strickland has the has the style that neutralized everything Israel Adesanya had for him. And he destroyed him. He destroyed him. He 49-46'd him, masterclassed him. Sean Strickland, whether you like it or not, Brett, Brett Okamoto, whether you, Dana White, or the UFC like it or not, Sean Tarzan Strickland is the best middleweight in the world. And no ESPN list is going to change that. Everybody knows it. Everybody who watched that fight knows it. Israel Adesanya is not number one. He's not even number two at this point. I'm, I arguably don't think he's number three, if you want to be honest. I think it goes Strickland, Drickus, 
and Hamza Chumayev. But we will see how Hamza Chumayev does against Paulo Costa. Maybe I'm wrong there, but, you know, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. And that's the great thing about this sport. But this is just a stupid opinion from Brett Okamoto. But uh, thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. Put on the notifications. Comment if you agree or disagree with this take. And comment if you agree or disagree that Brett Okamoto is a fucking cyborg for the UFC that doesn't have any takes of his own and he just listens to whatever Dana White tells him to spew. But yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Catch you guys next time. Thank you.